In today's programme, our team of real governors will be tackling a hypothetical yet realistic situation as it develops in a school. Today's challenging dilemma involves a school facing financial difficulties and the threat of redundancies. First, let's meet the panel. Jane Abramson, a community governor with 16 years' experience. Alex McNair, a parent governor for the last five years. And Eileen Moxon, with 15 years' governing expertise, including five as chair. Keeping a close eye on the proceedings and assessing the governor's performance is Paul McGann, an education officer with over 15 years of experience, supporting and training governors and troubleshooting problems in schools. It's time for the panel to find out what today's challenge is. Our hypothetical school's end-of-year budget reveals a deficit of £250,000 on a budget of £3 million, and the LEA wants to know what's gone wrong. The head blames a combination of factors, including remodelling staff, higher-than-expected sickness leave and the provision of essential ICT equipment. He claims the governors were warned they were going over budget, but they say they weren't expecting the overspend to be anything like this bad. I wonder what the Finance Committee has been doing, mm. because the Finance Committee is supposed to look at the spending on a monthly basis and really should have been advising the governors during the year that problems were looming. I feel that the, the Finance Committee haven't perhaps been asking the right questions. No. This is a time where delegated powers to a finance subcommittee have to come back to the main governing body, yes. I would suggest, yes. that you suspend those delegated powers and the whole governing body discuss this yes. because it's very bad. I mean, they should have had a budget forecast for the yeah. financial year. Yes. They should be monitoring it each month. The amount of sickness is probably the biggest factor in the budget going awry and yes. you can do very little about it. When they say higher than expected sickness leave, I feel the governors there perhaps should be looking at the sick policy operating as well within the school. Yes, and you do have to build in a contingency, yes. even if occasionally, if you get unlucky, that it isn't enough. Mm. They've got to give an explanation, which I feel is going to be extremely difficult mm. to the LEA and one that the LEA is going to actually accept. Mm. I think if I was the Chair of Finance, I would be resigning. <laughs> <laughs> the monitoring of a school budget is not something that can only happen twice a year, once when the budget is set and then at the end of the year to see whether it's been met. It's important that financial monitoring takes place at regular intervals throughout the course of the year. Then, for example, if one budget heading, for instance supply, is overspending, it may be possible to utilise other areas of the school's resources to supplement that budget to make sure that the school as a whole does not overspend. Our panel moves on to discuss how involved the governors should be in financial matters. The Finance Committee has the delegated power, which, as Jane says, should be referred back to the governing body in a situation like this so that it's, this doesn't come as a surprise. Well that's right and I think when you get into a very tight budget, certainly in a situation I've been in in the past, you give delegated powers at quite a low level mm. without reference back to the governors. Right. Might even be as little as sort of two and a half thousand pounds and any expenditure over that has to be sanctioned by the governors. I feel that this has to be an issue for the full governing body as you've Definitely. said. Definitely. Because at the end of the day they have whether it be delegated to a subcommittee or whether it be a full governing body, they have made some decisions, we would hope, along the way to yeah. this. And I feel that they have an ultimate responsibility mm -hmm. for this Ooh. deficit. Yeah. Maybe they just sort of looked, the new governors looked at this budget and thought, I don't understand that, I'll just let them get on with it. So we've, the governors have got to sit down and be very self-critical as this, well. This is clearly a governor failure. The governing body sets the financial policy for the school and the determination of which delegated powers are available to school staff and to the Finance Committee. What is critical is that the governing body receive regular reports from the school and from the Finance Committee on the financial implications of decisions that they may make. 
Budget deficits or surpluses should not come as a surprise to the governing body and can only result from them not receiving good quality information and steps must be taken urgently to ensure that they get the right information and are asking the appropriate questions. The chair of the finance committee resigns and the LEA instructs the school to come up with a plan for how they're going to solve their financial problems. Redundancies are proposed as a solution. Rumours spread. Staff morale begins to suffer and many blame the head for poor budget management. The MFL department is suffering from low pupil numbers and the obvious choice for cutbacks. However, the department recently received a glowing Ofsted report with many teachers rated as excellent. What I do think is important is that every avenue other than redundancy is explored before you look at redundancy. It's probably worth having a look at the staffing across the school here. Yeah. Modern foreign languages may have low numbers at the moment, but that's a very difficult decision to make. But if you look at where there may be an element of slight overstaffing, the first stage then could be to ask for volunteers for yeah. redundancy. Well, I think that's got to be a first, volunteers. Yeah. Yes. And just pray that yes. they came from a potentially overstaffed yes. area because going back to the modern language scenario, they've actually been looked on as, from Ofsted as being excellent. Mm. So that would be an area, you'd, even though it's low numbers, you'd be wanting to push yes. for future years, wouldn't it? Because the last thing you want is a mathematician or a scientist, which are almost impossible to recruit, mm. applying for early retirement when you know you're not going to be able to replace them. Yeah. The first thing to establish is that while the school needs to reduce staffing, it doesn't necessarily mean that there has to be redundancies. The re necessary reduction could come about as a result of natural wastage or by staff volunteering for early retirement. What is critical is that the staff that remain after the budget has been settled are able to deliver the curriculum that the school needs to deliver. Consequently, it's important that the governing body have an understanding of which staff need to remain in order to enable this to come about. Going on to staff morale suffering. I think it's absolutely vital that the chair of the governors and the head teacher mm. make a statement. Mm. Uh, I think they have to be absolutely 100% honest. No, that's right. So really what's got to happen is I, I actually think the whole staff should be addressed very, very yes. quickly before rumours start Starts flying around. around and getting exaggerated. So you start with a meeting of all the staff with the chair of governors there. I actually think as many governors as can Possible. get there should come mm -hmm. along as well. There should be a totally open, honest discussion, question and answer session. And after that, if the procedure does still have to go ahead, the quicker the better. Get it out of the way yeah. and then you can sort of pick up from the low morale and move the school forward. I think there's a step before that though and that's the unions. I think the staff will obviously be going to their unions. I think it's very, impossible, very okay. important that the chair and the head have meetings with all the union reps. Yes. And don't forget there should be staff governors. Yes. So that's a good channel onto the governing body yeah. to use yes. the staff governors and they should be able to assess how that's the right. staff are feeling. This type of situation inevitably has an impact upon staff morale. Our panel are right, however, to emphasise that there are ways of minimising this impact. One is by being completely honest with staff about the process and about the reasons for the decision making. The second is to reassure staff that all of the possible alternatives to compulsory redundancy will be considered before we get to that step. The final thing is to recognise that this is a legal process which will require detailed information and advice from the local education authority and the involvement of the representatives of the teaching staff through the trade unions. The schools in an area are experiencing urban decay and there's concern about falling pupil numbers exacerbating the budget problem in the future and how this will affect the school's long-term plan. The school also receives parents' concerns that staff redundancies and the budget deficit will lead to a drop in standards. A budget deficit to a lot of parents will possibly be raising alarm bells to a degree of, is the school going to remain open? When, when are they looking at closing it? What are they going to replace it with? Without the actual knowledge of the actual amount of deficit. So I think it, it could be raising alarm bells wrongly. So 
in some um, cases. The letter needs to go to parents as a matter of urgency. Yes, yes. And perhaps, although annual meetings are now not essential, a special meeting of parents needs to be called to talk the parents yeah. through the concerns yeah. with somebody from the LEA present. And of course that's the easy part for the school I feel at the moment mm -hmm. to actually address parents yes. and set a meeting up. That would be the easiest mm. action, immediate action for the school to actually take it and, and show the surrounding community that they're actually fully aware of what the feelings are and what the problems are. Communication with parents and the wider school community is very important, but perhaps more significant is having something real to communicate. And this involves the governing body sitting down at a very early stage with the local education authority to devise a plan for putting the school budget right. This will ensure that expectations of what's going to happen in the future are very clear, and I think parents will be more reassured by this. I don't think the deficit is a problem, but I think the falling school roles are, because the, the predictions are that they're just beginning to hit the secondary sector and will get much worse over the next few years. So in areas of deprivation, numbers tend to be dropping. That, of course, affects income. This is where the governors have got to use the LEA. Yes, and if this is becoming a fairly deprived area, then money needs to go in to help with regeneration. They shouldn't just be letting the school on, go on a downward spiral. It might be more complex than that, Jane, because they might be pulling down a lot of houses in the area and it might be some years before they, re they rebuild again. One school I know has worked very closely with housing associations to try and ensure that family houses were built, to try and mm. up the school numbers. So I think there's some scope for creativity. But it isn't going to help the school at this moment in time. Mm -hmm. It could be five years down, down the road mm. before they can actually be, you know, enticing families back into the area. But at, right at this moment in time, the LEA needs to be advising the, the governors yeah. on what their options yeah. are. One area where the local education authority can provide good quality information for the governing body at this point is in giving detailed demographic information about future pupil numbers. This will enable the governing body to begin to plan more strategically for the long-term vision of the school, and it may mean planning for a smaller size of school and adjusting staffing structures and expenditures accordingly. The responsibility for large sums of money is something which the governing body must take seriously. The budget should be monitored regularly throughout the year rather than just at the beginning and end. And this requires the governing body ensuring that they get high quality information from the school and that they ask the appropriate questions of that information. Where schools find themselves with budget difficulties which might necessitate a reduction in staffing, which could potentially lead to redundancies, it is important that the governing body adopt a very open and honest approach with staff, giving all of the necessary information and reassuring them that all steps will be taken to avoid compulsory redundancy. And finally, as in all other aspects of school life, long-term strategic planning is important. If pupil numbers are falling, this may require the governing body considering adopting a smaller size of school, perhaps with a specialism, and looking to collaborate with other local schools in a creative partnership to ensure that all of the children within an area receive the broad and wide-ranging curriculum that they're entitled to.